Section. Introduction. In this section, we aim to explore the ambitious goal of mechanistic interpretability, which involves understanding neural networks by breaking them down into their underlying programs, referred to as circuits, and the variables they use, known as features. A recent effective method for identifying features in language models is the use of sparse autoencoders, SAEs. These SAEs learn a set of one-dimensional representations that can be combined sparsely to recreate the hidden activations of the model. However, we note that the relationship between the width of the say and the reconstruction error follows a power law, indicating that some errors persist even as we scale the SAEs. We suspect that these persistent errors may arise from the model's hidden states containing more complex structures than the simple features captured by SAEs. Motivated by this insight, our focus in this work is to analyze the say error vector itself. By doing so, we hope to understand the limitations of current SAEs, the dynamics of their scaling, and the distribution of model activations. This approach differs from previous studies that primarily assess say performance through downstream benchmarks or basic loss metrics. We outline the structure of our paper as follows. In the first section, we reveal a key finding. Say errors are surprisingly predictable. We demonstrate that a significant portion of say error vectors can be explained through a linear transformation of the input activations. We also show that the size of these error vectors can be accurately predicted from the input activations, and that the error norms of larger SAEs can be predicted from smaller ones. In the next section, we propose models to explain these observations, including a new type of introduced error linked to the say architecture and its sparsity constraints. We then analyze both the linearly and nonlinearly predictable components of say error. Our findings indicate that while the nonlinear component influences downstream loss, it behaves differently from linear error, being more challenging for SAEs to learn and consisting of fewer absent linear features. In the following section, we demonstrate that optimizing inference time can enhance the variance explained by SAEs, though it only slightly reduces nonlinear error. We also show that using SAEs trained on earlier components can help decrease both nonlinear and total say error. We then discuss related work, starting with the linear representation hypothesis, LRH, which suggests that language model hidden states can be expressed as a sparse sum of linear features. Recent studies have supported this idea, but some have raised questions about its validity, finding more complex, multidimensional structures in certain models. We also review various techniques for benchmarking SAEs and characterizing their errors, noting that some studies have found that say reconstruction errors can significantly impact model performance compared to random perturbations. Lastly, we examine how say error scales with different factors, revealing that larger SAEs learn additional types of features compared to smaller ones. Section Summary In this section, we outline our goal to investigate the predictable nature of sparse autoencoder, say, errors in language models, revealing that a significant portion of these errors can be explained through linear transformations of input activations. We also discuss the implications of our findings on the understanding of model activations and the limitations of current say approaches, while contrasting our focus with previous work that primarily assessed say performance through downstream benchmarks. Section Notation. In this section, we consider neural network activations represented as vectors in AD dimensional space and sparse autoencoders that aim to minimize the difference between the original activations and their reconstructed versions, while using a limited number of active latent variables. We do not focus on the specific architecture or training methods of the sparse autoencoders, as those details can be found in other works. For our experiments, we set the activations to those from layer 20 of the Gemma 29B model. We utilize 300 contexts, each containing 1024 tokens from the uncopyrighted portion of the pile dataset, filtering to include only the activations of tokens after the 200th position. This approach helps us avoid the influence of token position on our results, resulting in approximately 247,000 activations. We employ the Gemma scope suite of sparse autoencoders. For our linear regression analyses, we randomly select 150,000 examples for training to prevent overfitting, 
given that the hidden dimension of Gemma 29b is 3584. We then report the R squared values on the remaining 97,000 activations, averaging across dimensions when transforming to a multidimensional output. We include bias terms in our regressions but omit them from the equations for clarity. In our first set of experiments, we determine the optimal linear probe that connects the activations to the squared norm of the sparse autoencoder's error. We find that the R squared values for these probes are very high, ranging from 86% to 95% for layer 20 across various combinations of sparse autoencoder width and sparsity level. We visualize these results in a contour plot. Overall, we observe that sparser and wider sparse autoencoders exhibit less predictable error norms. In further analysis, we show that activation probes yield significantly higher R squared values compared to those using tokens, sparsity level, model loss, or activation norm, except for the initial layers. Next, we analyze the R squared values for the optimal linear transformation from the activations to the sparse autoencoder's error. The R squared values for layer 20 range from 30% to 72% which is lower than those for the norm predictions but still higher than expected. This suggests that there are substantial linear subspaces that the sparse autoencoder struggles to learn. We notice a consistent pattern. As the width and sparsity level of the sparse autoencoder increase, the R-squared values decrease for error vector predictions, contrasting with the increasing trend seen in error norm predictions. We also explore a related metric, the fraction of variance that remains unexplained by both the sparse autoencoder reconstruction and a linear projection of the activations. We label this unexplained variance as nonlinear FVU. Interestingly, we find that at a fixed sparsity level, the nonlinear FVU remains roughly constant, indicating that while we can linearly predict a smaller portion of the error vector in larger sparse autoencoders, this is balanced by a decrease in the error vector itself. Conversely, the nonlinear FVU decreases as the sparsity level increases. We hypothesize that the nonlinear FVU is constant at a fixed sparsity level, allowing us to analyze its breakdown for varying sparse autoencoder widths. We plot this relationship and observe that the power law fit suggests the presence of linear error even at large widths. We assume that features not yet learned contribute to this linear error. Finally, we investigate the scaling behavior of per-token error norms between two sparse autoencoders. We aim to find a scalar that relates the error norms of one sparse autoencoder to another. Although the optimal probe for predicting the norm of sparse autoencoder error requires training, we can gain insights without training the larger model. We find that if the R-squared value is high, it indicates that errors in smaller sparse autoencoders can predict errors in larger ones. Our results show that per-token sparse autoencoder errors are indeed highly predictable, and we illustrate this correlation with a set of 100 tokens from the PILE dataset. Section Summary In this section, we analyze the performance of sparse autoencoders, SAEs, in reconstructing neural network activations, finding that the optimal linear probes can explain a significant portion of the variance in say error norms, 86% to 95%, and error vectors. 30% to 72%. We also observe that while larger SAEs show less predictable error vectors, the unexplained variance remains constant at fixed sparsity, indicating a complex relationship between say width, sparsity, and error predictability. Section. Modeling activations. In this section, we will adopt a weak linear hypothesis, which suggests that some features in language models are represented in a linear way. We consider linear features and a random vector that is sparse, meaning it has many zero values. The dense component of our input can be represented by a random vector, which might include Gaussian noise or other nonlinear features that do not fit into a low dimensional linear space. Assuming our sparse autoencoder, say, has a certain number of latent features, we recognize that the dense component cannot be captured in a low dimensional linear space. Therefore, we assume the say learns only the most common features and introduces some error in this process. Next, we analyze the learned probe that predicts the error norm from our input. 
We claim that if our input is a sparse sum of orthogonal vectors, we can find a perfect prediction vector that approximates the squared norm of the input. The intuition is that we can set this probe vector as a weighted sum of the learned vectors. However, if the input consists of non-orthogonal vectors, this perfect prediction may not hold, but a similar approach can still provide a good approximation if the vectors are nearly orthogonal. We also explore why larger SAEs have less predictable error norms. As the number of features increases, the error from the dense component becomes larger and less predictable. Moving on to the prediction of the error vector, we assume that the introduced component cannot be approximated as a linear function of the input. If it can be represented in a certain way, the transformation error will equal the introduced component. If not, the unexplained variance will provide an upper limit on the true variance of the introduced component. We can estimate the dense component by examining the variance explained by our say and the residuals. Although we lack access to the true feature vectors, we can use a similar distribution of vectors that we do have. By replacing our input with the output of the say, we can control various quantities of interest, such as simulating the dense and introduced components by adding Gaussian noise. In our experiments with a specific say setup, we find strong correlations between the estimated dense component and the added noise, as well as between the introduced component and the noise added to the say output. However, we note that some of the estimated nonlinear error may also stem from the dense component. Thus, we conclude that we can predict error vectors largely because they consist of unlearned linear features in an almost orthogonal space. We can predict a smaller portion of larger say errors due to the decreasing number of linear features as the say width increases. We also hypothesize that the linearly predictable part of the say error mainly consists of unlearned features and the dense component, while the non-predictable part is primarily the introduced component. We will further investigate this hypothesis in the next section. Section Summary In this section, we adopt a weak linear hypothesis to model activations in sparse autoencoders, SAEs, assuming they learn only the most common linear features while introducing some error. We analyze how well we can predict the norms and vectors of say errors, concluding that these errors largely consist of unlearned features and that our ability to estimate them depends on the linear predictability of the introduced and dense components. Section Analyzing Per Token Scaling Predictions in this section, we analyze the predictability of per-token say errors across different sizes. We find that as the size increases, certain components of the say error remain mostly constant, allowing us to make accurate predictions based on previous errors. Specifically, since we are already working with a large size, a simple linear prediction of the current error works well. This leads us to a natural experiment. If we can predict the introduced component of the error on a per-token basis, we might improve our predictions for larger say errors, which we explore further in a later section. Next, we conduct experiments to validate our hypothesis that the division of say error into linear and nonlinear components is significant. We apply a norm prediction test on various vectors, including the original input and different error components. Our results show that the norm of the original input can be predicted almost perfectly, supporting our idea that it can be modeled as a sum of one-dimensional features. In contrast, the nonlinear error scores lower, indicating it may not consist mainly of linear features. We also train SAEs on the linear and nonlinear error components. We expect that learning the nonlinear error will be more challenging due to its complexity. Using a fixed say setup, we find that the say trained on the nonlinear error has a higher unexplained variance compared to the one trained on the linear error, confirming our hypothesis. To further investigate, we assess the interpretability of the learned latents. Our findings indicate that the say trained on the linear error produces more interpretable features. Finally, we examine how well the different error components contribute to the overall performance of the say. We modify a common metric to compare the recovery of cross entropy loss when using the say reconstruction versus the original input. Our results suggest that both error types contribute to the increase in downstream loss, with the linear error possibly having a slightly greater impact. 
We also explore whether the nonlinear error can aid in predicting say per token error scaling. Our analysis shows that using the norm of the nonlinear error improves our predictions for larger say errors, confirming our initial hypothesis. Section summary. In this section, we analyze the predictability of per token say errors across different sizes and demonstrate that the linear and nonlinear components of say error can be effectively separated and modeled. Our experiments confirm that the nonlinear error contributes significantly to predicting larger say errors, with a notable improvement in prediction accuracy when incorporating its norm. Section Reducing. In this section, we explore how we can reduce the nonlinear error at a given point by enhancing the performance of our stacked autoencoders, SAEs. We will examine the effectiveness of simple techniques in achieving this reduction, 